Today's episode is brought to you by Offering Tree. I need to tell you about this because I use and love this software in my own business because it saves me so much time. It automates my bookings, my online payments, Zoom integration, reminder emails, and much, much more. Visit offeringtree.com slash Shannon to check it out and get the special discount for podcast listeners. Today's episode is also brought to you by Shelly Prosco's Balance Flow Yoga 7-Week Series, which is being hosted by pelvic health professionals and which started last week, but you still have time to sign up. The first class was all about the theory and the research going into Balance Flow Yoga, and now for the next six weeks, we practice together. And I have a special podcast listener discount, so you can save $50 when you register Use the code BALANCE, join us by signing up over at pelvichealthprofessionals.com, click on the drop-down menu yoga, and then click on Balance Flow Yoga. Hello and welcome to the Connected Yoga Teacher Podcast. I'm your host, Shannon Crow. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm recording today on the land of the Anishinaabe, Odawa, and Mississauga people which is about three hours north of Toronto, most often called the Bruce Peninsula in Ontario, Canada. If you are new here, you might not know that I'm also a mom of three, a yoga teacher, and the founder of Pelvic Health Professionals. And if you are a returning listener, you know how things go here. This podcast was created for you, the yoga teacher, so that each and every week you are connected to the information and inspiration that's going to support you as you build your yoga business. Now, things got pretty heavy in the last couple of podcast episodes. Well, maybe it just felt like that for me as I prepared to share what was a very difficult part of my yoga journey. And if you listened or if you get my emails, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, go back and have a listen to the last couple of episodes. With that in mind, I wanted to make sure that today's episode was a little bit lighter, but still focused on answering a question that I often hear from yoga teachers. What do I take with me when I sign up for a yoga teacher training? So whether it's your very first yoga teacher training or your hundredth yoga teacher training that you're taking, or if you're making a list for new yoga teachers or current yoga teachers who want to take a training with you, if you're making a list for them, here is the packing list or the list of things to remember when you go and sign up for a yoga teacher training. Now, I don't take everything on this list, even though it's known in my house that I'm an overpacker. Just ask Sean (laughs) the first time I met him in person and he picked me up the airport in Portland, Oregon. I had a giant suitcase for just a few days. And that's because I like to be prepared and I like to have options. So it's something he still teases me about to this day and I'm okay with it. (laughs) So the list I'm sharing today is everything I could think of. In addition, there are some suggestions from our Connected Yoga Teacher community because I posted a group poll and hundreds of yoga teachers voted and added to this list. So I'll link to that in our show notes. You can find all of the notes over at theconnectedyogateacher.com slash 320. And if you're not already a member of our Facebook community, come and join us. It's a super supportive place to hang out, share your questions, and connect with other yoga teachers. We're a growing and global group now of over 12,000 yoga teachers. So if you want to join, you can head on over to theconnectedyogateacher.com and click on join our online yoga teacher group. It's free to join, or you can just search in Facebook, search for the Connected Yoga Teacher Group. All right, so let's dive right into this list of what to take to your next yoga teacher training or what to suggest to others if you're leading a yoga teacher training. First on the list, can you guess? Yoga mat. And this might seem obvious, but I've forgotten mine so many times. And actually, when I first became a yoga teacher, I didn't even own or use a sticky mat, a traditional yoga sticky mat. So that's the first thing on the list. Next on the list is all of the props if the space where you're heading to doesn't supply them. So blocks, 
yoga belts or straps, blankets, bolsters, eye pillows, meditation cushion, you know, all the things that you really like to have when you're practicing yoga, check in and see, will those be in the space or do I take my own? One thing that I know some yoga teachers bring with them is yoga mat cleaner. And I don't add this into my suitcase or or my bag when I'm heading to a yoga teacher training and here's why. If it has essential oils in it or if you use essential oils, please note that some people are very allergic to or sensitive to essential oils. I personally love them and I use them all the time in my home. And when I used to go to yoga teacher trainings and when I used to go to yoga classes, I used to use them as well in those spaces. But then I started to learn from people who react to essential oils. So I don't take them anymore. And I actually cut back and using them in my house as much. And so that's why I would take them off the list of things to pack. And then I'd also be very clear if you're leading a yoga teacher training or a workshop or a class, I'd be very clear about the use of perfumes and essential oils. Now I know these are very different, (laughs) but just ask someone who's sensitive to smell or sensitive to essential oils or perfumes. It's irritating to them no matter what it's made out of. On that note, I'd also ask if people have allergies, and I'd ask this on an intake form at a studio or to a yoga teacher training or a workshop. Any in-person event that I would host nowadays, I would ask about allergies. I remember being at a music thing once where someone innocently started to peel an orange and another person way across the room had to like jump up and leave right away because they have such a strong allergy to oranges. So it's good to know when people have allergies if you're hosting something. Okay, the next thing on my list is a shawl or a scarf. So I like to choose a shawl or a scarf that really is almost half blanket (laughs) because it has so many uses. I can cover my eyes with it like an eye pillow when I'm in shavasana or or when I'm in meditation, I can cover up if I'm feeling cool or cold or if I want to just, you know, sit on it almost like a meditation cushion. I like to have one with me, not just for fashion and decoration, (laughs) but also because it's super useful. And that leads me to my next thing on the list is layers of clothing or extra clothing. So I often will warm up and cool down depending on whatever I'm doing in a yoga space, you know, and depending on what the heating is set at as well. So I bring layers of clothing with me to every yoga teacher training. I have been known to take a big fuzzy blanket if a space is really cold. I hate, hate, hate feeling cold in a yoga space. And sometimes if it's like a restorative yoga teacher training, I require a lot of blankets in that space and then I'll warm right up and be moving around and feel like, okay, that's it. I got to take off the blanket, take off my sweater, (laughs) take off my wool socks. You get the idea. Connected yoga teachers, before I get into the second half of my list of things to take to a yoga teacher training... I want to thank our sponsors for today's episode, especially if you haven't heard of Offering Tree. So I use their software in my own business, and I love that yoga students can easily register for a class, pay online, fill out the waiver form, get the Zoom link along with email and text reminders, and everything is automatic. I don't have to think about it at that point. All I have to do is have the link ready on my website or share it on social media or in my email. And I love that Offering Tree gives all of our Connected Yoga Teacher podcast listeners a special discount. You can find that over at offeringtree.com slash Shannon. I'm actually using Offering Tree right now to register anyone signing up for the Balance Flow Yoga 7-week series with Shelly Prosco. And I love that I can check the roster and see who's signed up. And I can send that over to Shelly very easily. I can export it. I can import it into my email software as well. There is an option to send out emails through Offering Tree, but I like to import it into my own email that I use all the time. 
I also really appreciate that I can set up discount codes in there, which allows me to track where people are hearing about the event. So for example, and this is a real life example, I have one special podcast listener discount. So you can save $50 when you register if you use the code BALANCE. And I'll know if you use that code that you heard about it here on the podcast. Now I have a separate code that I sent out in my email this week so that I can see, okay, who is signing up through my email list? And then I know which one is more effective for my next offering. Do I talk about it more on the podcast or more in my email list? Or, I mean, the secret to this is always inviting people. (laughs) So let me invite you. Let me tell you where you can sign up if you're interested. Head on over to pelvichealthprofessionals.com. Look under yoga and click on balance flow yoga and use the discount code balance to save $50. So this is happening live April 11th to May the 23rd, but there are replays for this. So if you've missed some of the beginning dates, you can still sign up, get access to the replays and you get access for the full year. So thank you so much to our sponsor, Offering Tree, for making today's podcast possible, but also for helping me to simplify my yoga business. All right, let's get back to our list of things to take to yoga teacher training. Always, 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 I take a notebook with me. Sometimes I take a notebook and a journal. And I want to give a shout out to Elizabeth, who took this one step further and who suggested to take a clipboard because it's not floppy. You can write on it really well. I love that Elizabeth suggested this along with some other great ideas in that Facebook thread that I'll link to in the show notes. The next thing I would add to that list is colored pencils, markers, pens, or crayons, whatever helps you to learn. So I once got scolded in a yoga teacher training for coloring during the training. So be aware that not everyone knows that doodling and coloring can be a tool for focus. Because of that experience, I doodle a little smaller now in some spaces, or I just make sure to tell the instructors when I feel safe that this is one of my learning tools. And if you want to learn more on how doodling has been researched and proven to help boost brain power, creativity, and mindfulness, I will link to a really great summary article in the show notes. So on the flip side of that, on that note, when I teach any workshop, training, or event, I encourage people to doodle and color. Sometimes I bring like a big box of crayons or pencil crayons or markers And I really try and get people doodling and drawing things out, maybe in charts or whatever, as part of learning. Because I know it's really effective for my learning. Okay, next on the list is deodorant. And this really depends on your own body, your own beliefs around deodorant, and what type of movement you're doing in a yoga teacher training. So you decide, is deodorant on your list of things that you need at a yoga teacher training? Next thing on the list is snacks, food, and drinks. So again, check for allergies before you open any packages. I like it when yoga teacher trainings ask, you know, are there any allergies or if they just make it very evident at the start, okay, this group of people here are the allergies that exist just so I can be mindful of that. And I also, (laughs) with regards to snacks, because snacks are very important to me, this is how I keep my energy going. I try and avoid really loud and crinkly packaging because I've attempted to open some really loud and crinkly packages during yoga teacher training lectures. <laughs> and so I'm very mindful of like what it's packaged in or, or I just open that package up and put it in something else <laughs> if it's too loud. Next on the list is a water bottle. And I like to know if I can refill my water bottle. And if I can't, you better believe that I'm going to be taking some extra water bottles or mason jars. Mason jars work really well because they have a lid, but also remember that they're made of glass and they can break. But also with metal water bottles, they just love to fall over, especially when everyone in the space is in deep relaxation or meditation. Is it just me 
or does that happen to everyone? (laughs) I feel like that's when my water bottle will fall over. I'll just move my foot and bonk, over goes my water bottle. So I really kind of watch in the space what's going to work. I do like mason jars. I sometimes like to put lemon slices in it or if it's in the summer, put some ice cubes in it to keep the jar cool. Okay, next on the list is Kleenex. So the mom in me always has Kleenex in the car, but I feel like I'm not at the grandma stage yet, so I don't have Kleenex up my sleeves and at the ready all the time like my grandma Hazel Jean used to. But definitely Kleenex is something to remember in case it's not in the space that you have. And I always like to have Kleenex in spaces when I'm doing yoga because, you know, People's noses run or sometimes people have tears that come up and I just like to have Kleenex available. Next thing on the list is a phone. Now, cell phones are so handy for capturing images and videos and that can really be a helpful tool for learning and capturing something. I've also seen yoga teachers capture audio and record the audio of a lecture. Just make sure you get permission before you take a photo or you take a video or you do audio and also just let people know, like, I'm not taking this to post it on social media unless you have permission to do so. Just let them know this is the way you learn and um, you're just going to keep it for yourself if that's the intention. Also, I feel like I don't have to say this to a bunch of yoga teachers, but please remember to put your phone on silent and shut off your notifications so that your phone isn't making noise. It's not distracting you. Oh, and also thank you, Patty, for adding this to the list. Don't forget your phone charger. Shout out of gratitude to Jill for saying, remember to bring a large tote bag. I Agree 100% with this, Jill. Thank you for adding this to the list, especially if you pack like me. You might even want one that's on wheels if you pack like I do. Last few things on the list. So Angela, shout out to Angela for adding this one saying, don't forget to bring an open mind. I think this one is super important, especially if you are new to yoga. I think an open mind is really helpful. And I would also add to that, Being okay with questioning and asking for information that supports something that is said in class. So Elizabeth, thank you for saying like, remember to take your critical thinking skills. I was like, oh, that's what I'm trying to articulate here when I was saying like, be okay with asking questions. And if you hear a statement like, you know, yoga helps with this look for the supporting evidence, the research, ask for the science. So critical thinking skills for sure. And back in episode 318, just a couple of episodes ago, I talked about how I wish I did that more in specific trainings. So that's something to also keep in mind if you're needing help with like, how can I speak up and ask questions? Go have a listen to episode 318 for sure. If you are a person who sweats a lot, you might want to remember to bring a hand towel or a towel that's enough to fill your entire yoga mat. You know, you can get those really small ones for doing yoga or you can get one that goes right over your yoga mat. That's really dependent on how much you might sweat during this yoga teacher training. And the last thing on my list, (laughs) which might sound super old fashioned, but hear me out on this. The last thing on my list is cards. And I mean business cards. So you can have business cards now that have a QR code on them that people can scan. So you actually just have one card and you keep it with you and, and there's no like passing a piece of paper to someone or a business card. But you can also do actual business cards or maybe something more inventive like bookmarks to give out because you are there at a yoga teacher training connecting with other people and it's a great spot. Let's say someone says like, oh, you know, let's keep in touch after the training. That's something you can give out. Or maybe someone says, hey, I actually have a yoga student who's dealing with what you specialize in working with. And so if I could get some cards, it's a great place to connect and to tell people about what you do. And that card might be the reminder when they get home. Alrighty, what have I forgotten on this list? 
I'm sure there is something that you know of that you love to take with you to yoga teacher training, and I've forgotten it. So if you want to add to the list, head on over to the connectedyogateacher.com slash 320, and down at the bottom of the show notes is a comment place where you can type in what you like to take to yoga teacher training or what you remind others to bring when they sign up for yoga teacher training. And I'll make sure the whole list is in the show notes as well. If you'd just like to copy it and paste it over in an email and then make it your own list, I'm happy for you to do that. Now, if you're looking for a good yoga teacher training, head back and listen to episode 318 where I share a list of questions to ask before you sign up and pay. Also, listen to last week's podcast, episode 319, where I talk about the different reasons that we end up signing up for yoga teacher trainings. And just to clarify, I am all for learning more, continuing education, and personal growth. And I have 100% signed up for yoga teacher trainings for other reasons that were not helpful. And so that's why I created that episode. I hope that all of these episodes about yoga teacher trainings have been helpful to you. If you have more questions that are related to this or that are totally unrelated, I'd love to hear from you. Send me a voicemail or an email. You can email me over at shannon at theconnectedyogateacher.com. To leave a voicemail, head on over to theconnectedyogateacher.com and look for the voicemail button on the right-hand side. Huge thank you to our entire team over here, Suzanne, Crunch, and Sinead, who made today's podcast possible, but who also do so much out in the world. They are amazing people. I'm so grateful that I get to work with them each and every week. Thank you also to you, dear listener. You make this podcast possible. Your listening time is really valuable, and I'm so appreciative that you've hung out here today to find out what to bring to the next yoga teacher training or to find out what to remind people to bring. So I just want to say thank you. It's really fun that we get to hang out no matter what you're doing, whether that's cleaning your house or walking your dog or driving somewhere. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. And I'm super curious to know what will you be doing this week to stay connected to yourself, your yoga practice, and to your community so that you can share the yoga that lights you up.